Welcome to episode 27 of Venture Ventures Actual Play D&D Campaign. We are a bunch of improvisers, LARPers, storytellers uh, who play D&D 5E. I am Jake Friday, your dungeon master for today and every day in the last 26 episodes we have played. It's a bit hot in my room. I have all the windows closed, airs off. It's all perfect for sound, and Brian told me there was a sound problem, and then I got real sad. But we'll <laughs> we'll figure it out. It's all better. You okay. Thank God. <laughs> <sighs> Man, wow. <that's> sound <laughs> issues, right? Um, first of all, congrats to Ann and Moth on winning the dice and the ampersand water bottle. That will be mailed to you, and who knows when it'll get there honestly Yay. Uh, you fantastic human being you and uh before we get started let's go around the table introduce yourself name your character and also since you guys leveled up tell us what you did with your level up all right oh. let's start with dave hey guys i'm dave roderick i play a king ku warlock named prodding rod proddy for short Let's see, what did I do? So I added a spell, Armor of Agathis. You basically attack me, you get 20 cold damage. It's like a cold shield. Um, it's a defensive spell. Uh, then I swapped out a cantrip. I don't remember which one I replaced, but I got told the dead, and that just deals necrotic damage to a creature. Um, so it's another kind of cantrip that I can use over and over again that deals damage. Cool. And for my uh, ability increase, I, use, I had one, I had two abilities that were at odd numbers. I had Constitution and Charisma, which are pretty important. And so I just leveled each of those one. So that increased my my uh, max hit points pretty good, a pretty good amount. Um, and then the Charisma helps me cast all my spells. So. Perfect. That's yeah. a productive level up. Brian. Yeah. Uh, hello, I'm Ryan Omega. I play Orson Akers, the pig farmer warlock. And uh, for my level up, uh, because I was only just recently aware that we just leveled up, uh, I just right now took a point in, in, the, in the, yeah, the top today, an extra point in charisma. And then haven't figured out anything else yet. Excellent. Uh, Brian. I'm Brian. I play Crispy Crispin Oakenshaft. He's a human Kensei monk, uh, though he's more gunslinger than monk, but it's a monk in terms of mechanics. Uh, for my level up, I took a feat, and through the power of meditation, Crispy has uh, learned to manipulate the universe juice uh, through the magic initiate feat. So he can do some uh, more exciting stuff, some cleric spells. And we'll like, just have to see what. Like universe juice. Universe juice or like medichlorines? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> we just call it key. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're midichlorians. They flow through us and around us. And in DM said it. DM said it. Uh, <laughs> uh, sarcastically a part of the universe. Um, Lex. Hey, I'm Lex. I play Ashwin, the mouse folk fighter, and um, I di haven't leveled up yet. I forgot. It's okay. Uh, you can still. Who knows if we'll nice. be in yeah. combat soon? But you'll just have to roll with your level seven guy if we are. Uh, I mean, I, think I was doing pretty good. Oh no, you were. You, yeah, you were fine. It's won't be a problem for you. Uh, oh, I haven't rolled HP yet. Should we do that? Uh, yeah, you can do that in the rolling channel. All right, I'll do that. And, um, or if you want to take the average, you can do that. So it's up Never. to you. Um, if there's nothing else, I will do a little recap. Last time on Venture Ventures, uh, the Big Bed Fellows were in a, the biggest town they've been in, the Viranal Dominion, Glotopole. Uh, and uh, made their way into a basement where they were attacked by some gas spores, which gave them some weird visions of someone named Fordock Kems, who also happened to be a 
Beholder. Uh, and um, from there, they went to find a planar prison uh, to eventually make their way to the floating tower of Mostashar, where Crispy wanted to go. It seemed like Crispy was the most emphatic about making uh, going to Mostashar. Uh, in the prison of the Mottled Mirror, they teleported and instantly encountered a quali qualitype beings called Zorbos. I'm glad I remembered that. As well as crystal beings called Shardmind. Purely made out of crystal and held together by who knows what. Probably just really old jam. But who knows. Uh, after that... Uh, fight and having allowed one of the shard mine to escape uh, they made their way down a cavern uh, tunnel and Nihilus was alerted by a device he carried on his person that something was wrong in his hometown in the ocean and he had to leave to deal with that as this alert is only put out there when some crazy stuff is going on. And uh, that happened at a three-way junction in the tunnel. And that was before they, you all decided what you wanted to do with this three-way junction. Um, that's where we left off. You are now... Faced with the three tunnels, um, I believe you guys had. We, yeah, go ahead. We had, we had picked one. I just can't remember which one was it was. The right one, uh, the smaller one. I remember I smelled the tunnels. Yes. And, and that ruled out one of them for us. While you guys are still looking, uh, you hear. Um, a few minutes after Nihilus has taken off, you hear a voice seemingly out of thin air say, must have been important to him to leave once he's made it this far. Who said that? Did you hear that? You yeah. guys heard it too? Yeah? Yep. That's not one of you? I think they were referring to Nihilus. I mean, sure seems like it, but who's watching us? Would you guys like to make a hmm. perception check? Or I can... Yes. It's, yes. it's definitely above your passive, but... Ooh, 22. 15. Dave? Uh, i got to find my perception. Uh, 16. Six. <laughs> None of you can figure out where it's coming from. And oh, wow. And as you guys are looking around, you hear it start to laugh. Very breathy. <laughs> and out of the shadows steps a very pale, very light green, thin figure. Thinner than... Most humanoids, very much uh, thinner than humans, even thinner than elves. You're uh, talking like Christian Bale, the fighter skinny? Yeah, but not, <laughs> that's a very good reference, but not uh, <laughs> immediately. It was just like, uh, I remember everything from uh, watching that movie. It's <laughs> not as concerning health-wise, uh, this, this creature... <laughs> You like the way I put that? I couldn't think of a better way to put that. It just <laughs> took the long road on that one. Um, and also, the first thing you notice is that the, this creature has no nose. Um, it's just Voldemort. two holes and has uh, leathers, very light leather uh, clothes on, seemingly made for movement rather than uh, decoration or or uh, any other purpose 
and this pale figure steps out of the shadows and and says again must have been pretty important for him to leave once he's made it this far and i'm immediately like tensed up because i didn't see that there was someone there uh, <laughs> yeah he's he said it was who who are you and how long you've been watching us my name is Zerth Ficus. Who are you? And what are you doing down here? Down here? I thought we were up. Shit. Uh, <laughs> she. Well, we... She. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we were sent here by uh, an acquaintance of ours, I guess you could say. Uh, via teleportation, so... Maybe you could actually help us out in that regard. Where exactly uh, did we land? Well, you are relatively close to the floating tower of Mostashar, but... Ah, sweet. I did That's what we are hoping for. I did see you fight and encounter those horrible creatures animals i don't know what they are in all the planes of existence i've traveled i've never seen anything like them as well as a shard mine so i'm likely to believe your story but just... Prady, Prady just he looks at him and then he he goes like this points at the right tunnel and he goes car and he starts walking towards the right tunnel the wise Kenku. Yeah, he is. Uh, he's our leader, so we. Uh, looks like we gotta follow him that way. He's your what leader. You how do? Here? How do you? I've seen Kenku communicate through mimicry, but how have uh, you he, managed to? He. Uh, he makes it known what he needs. He can talk to us just fine. Fair enough. Uh, down this hallway, my compatriots and I have a camp, and it seems that both of us would benefit from each other's company based on the dangers we've encountered down here. Wait, what do we get by accompanying you? Uh... I was told not to trust creepy strangers in caves. Typically, that's a very... <laughs> typically, <laughs> he's not laughing, Jake's up. laughing. Uh, <laughs> typically, that's a very good tenant to follow. But if you want to face off against the Illithid or the Dwergar and or the other beings down here, then we should probably talk at least. I promise you no harm will come to you unless you first harm us. We are a Gith Zerai raiding party, scouting party. Well, that's, uh, sure. Can't can't say i know what that means what? uh what? sure what? Let, i'd say we can walk down this hallway with you and find out a bit more of what's going on around here pretty is... pretty's been walking a little bit but he's only like 20 feet away he turns around and he telepathically is just like what are they what are they gonna raid this is like a like a war-torn like northern like like pardon the language but just a shit show up here like what are they gonna raid maybe us if we go with them that's yeah. a good point. What Do is you... a Gitzerai? Are you asking him? Yeah. We are former slaves of the Illithid who managed to escape their bondage and broke off from other brethren who also escaped. Uh, who tend to have more of a militaristic bent to them, but both the Githzerai and the Githyanki 
hate the illithids that once enslaved us. Okay. I still don't know what some of those things mean. He, as you're, yeah, he says, you don't know. Oh, that's right. I believe the more common name for them is Mind Flayers. Have you seen the... What? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? Mind Flayers. Ma- wait, wait, but what? Those, those aren't real, though. Those are just a story. Yeah, those are legends. Those, those can't be real. They're like... They're like... Oh, Boogie, you know, boogeymen. Like boogeymen. Scare your yeah, kids like to the, bed sort of shit. Yeah, like the old man that has things in the sack and gives random things to children. You don't know what those things are. I assure you that they are real and they are dangerous and... The Githzerai or the or the Illithids? Why would I say we're dangerous? I just wanted... It came out of sorry. nowhere. I was asking my party. I guess I'm not oh, speaking okay. telepathically to you. I, th- I think he means the mind flayers are the dangerous ones. The, yeah. There's what he's, he's referring to them as illithids? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, oh okay. Right. Now I, I, I now I now get it. All right. Well, I think we got a decision to make as, as a group. We just got to decide. Do we want to go talk to his raiding party or just want to keep going down this right tunnel? I think uh, we should just be like, hey, yeah. if you alone want to come with our party, you can, but otherwise we're just going to keep going down this right tunnel. Well, going down this right tunnel, he said, is where his uh, compatriots are, so we're going to run oh. smack into him, I think, if we just walk down this tunnel. Oh. I, I, I think a conversation, we are in parts unknown. I think a conversation might uh, might benefit us quite a bit. And uh, I, I mean, he's he's a small fella, right? I think we'll be okay if 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 shit goes south. He's about five five, extreme, probably, definitely under a hundred pounds, but very uh, lean and not lacking for muscle. I don't trust this situation, guys. This doesn't seem quite right. Um, it sounds like. No matter which path we choose, there's going to be danger anyways, so, I mean, do you really want to just trust this random dude we met in a cave? Trust him as far as hearing what he has to say? Yeah, I could do that. He I'm thinks not... there's a mind flayer here. Yeah, and uh, I'd rather go with him and not see it than go down one of the other tunnels and run into that. Well, the way I look at it, that this if guy didn't he's here and... If he's still here and he's alive, then then that means he, that he must have some kind of survival ability of some sort. Well, none of us saw him, and he was right fucking next to us, so at least he can do that. Uh, but... Right. <laughs> he, uh, he interrupts. It's all quiet while you guys are having these conversations, <laughs> and he interrupts and, and asks... How are you communicating? Clearly, there's something telepathic going on. Uh, we have a hive mind. We're just processing things right now. Yeah, there's no, no no telepath happening here. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> are, are you trying to deceive him? Yes. Okay, make a deception <laughs> roll with disadvantage. <laughs> Thanks to various the situation and various reactions <laughs> oh uh... so disadvantage is 2d20 take the lower number oh i think I... oh no it got worse <laughs> i didn't think a five could get worse um <laughs> but i rolled a two but i have a plus two so it's a four <laughs> you're not very good at deception are you little mouse what is your name i'm ashwin it no i'm good at being the cute one and fighting lying is not a strong suit okay i'll admit that what are all your names Did we already... i'm crispy 
And the the bird who who you can't understand is uh that's Prouty. I'm Orson. Nice to meet you all. Uh, I will be returning to my camp now. If you would like to join me, you're welcome to come, and we will discuss. Well, let me ask you one question. Maybe uh, I, I'm on board, but maybe to put my friends here at ease. When you say your camp, are we talking about there's, you know, 2,000 of you that we're about to walk into, or like five of you that we're about to walk into? Just I, so we have some expectation here. Yes, uh, that's why I corrected myself when I said raiding party with scouting party. We are ah. scouting party out of the... Ristilzen. I'm going to spell it for you now. R Y S T I L I Z I N. Ristilzen Monastery in the Frozen Jungles. And there are four of us currently. See, Ash, are you are you are you frightened of four scouts? Come on, I've, I've feel free to insight you. check this guy at any time. <laughs> Maybe. I... Yeah, I'll, I'll insight. I'll insight. I'll try right. it. We'll see what happens. Crispy's made his decision already. <laughs> I got a f- nine. You got a 14? Got a 12. He seems honest and he's not really trying, he's not telling half truths or anything. He seems to be. Hmm. I, I think we'll be okay, and I think yeah. we have more we can gain out of talking to him than lose, personally. We'll see. You can leave we'll whenever see. you'd like. If And know. we can leave whenever we'd like. See? He's being so gracious. All right, let's do it. Fine. So, let's do it. He uh, leads you Lead down the, way, the, leads you down the, tw- the tunnel, and... Uh, it goes on for probably a few hundred feet and curves off down and to the right and you come across a little opening in the tunnel uh, where it widens to about 30 feet and then the tunnel continues on but before it continues on there's some rubble and such and you see a campfire and some tents and it does seem to be a little encampment uh and uh above the campfire the smoke seems to just be not collecting it's just disappearing and um uh the other three gif zarai are one of them is standing the other two are are tending to the fire and talking and the one standing is darker green, about six feet tall, a little more muscular, uh, heavier definitely, and is wearing similar garb to Ficus, Zerth Ficus, whom you just met. And the other two are much um, less dressed, but they have their their hands and feet um, very r- wrapped up with some black uh, fabric of some kind. Um, and the one standing greets you and bows as you enter the camp and introduces himself as, I'm Zerthraya. Welcome to the camp. I'm sorry we had to follow you for so long. We just have to be careful about who we come into contact with. So you were stalking us? My my brother here, Zerth Ficus, he was following you as soon as the encounter you had in the teleportation room broke out to be fair ash they are scouts stalking people is kind of like their whole shit i'm just saying there's something (laughs) suspicious about this may i ask you what is suspicious i promise you we are 
not leading you astray in any way. Well, I mean, we fought a lot of weird creatures. Then you guys pop out of nowhere. You guys kind of talk a little funny. I, I don't know who to trust at the moment. We are not from here. We are not from this planet, but we do our best to talk as you do. Yeah. <laughs> so is this, uh, you said you're not from this planet. Is this Restilizen? Restilizen? Yep. Monastery. Uh, is that is that also not on this planet? Or is that no, more? No, that is in the frozen jungles to the east. That is our a, frozen jungles. Yes, okay. a monastery where we have a monastery there that watches over the the elder evil that sleeps beneath the jungle and then we have a monastery there and a monastery in the jungles of Nithix which is in southern Envir to the west on the western coast it's a very uh, thick jungle known for its elves who stayed out of the war between the north and the south for the most part um, and that's pretty much all you know about the jungles. There's, uh, another thing you know is that there's a great wall that was built by the elves that divides the beginning of the jungle and the plains, and the wall is hundreds of feet high, and there's steps going up to it, um, that takes a half day to climb the steps to get to the top of the wall. Um, that's a pretty well-known thing just because it's, uh, so odd. Mm -hmm. And, um, he says, we are here as I'm sure my brothers, my brother, uh, Ficus told you because we heard of a illithid incursion and activity in this area. What have Understood. you seen? What have you experienced? Well, no Illithid that we've seen. Uh, we pretty much showed up. Well, you saw it. We showed up and uh, basically found ourselves under attack from Shardmind. But that's who we're trying to find our way up to most of Shard. We uh, think the Illithid are controlling the Shardmind. Or at least deceiving oh. them. That's news to us. Good to know. What gives you that? Everyone note that down. <laughs> Illithid and Zerth Ficus at that point whispers to Zerth Raya and Zerth Raya says Illithid known to the common folk of this planet as mind flayers they're known to control other races and other beings for their own gains and as they once controlled the gith and he puts his hands out signaling to the other gith and we think that they are controlling the shard mind or at least deceiving them we're not 100 percent sure about it quite yet but we know that there are dwergar which are known to be uh minions of mind flayers we know that let me ask you this have you seen dwergar have you seen little uh brain creatures i don't know what you call them in uh common tongue brain creatures with little paws that we've been yeah, calling probably just start brain dogs gnomes gnomes what no, not said yet. little. Yeah, dogs. he said little creature. Oh, like dogs, brain, brain dogs, brain dogs. So, like, we 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 killed uh, one of them, at least one of them, two and, of them. And Raya says, <laughs> kind of motions to uh, Ficus, who's Raya has much more pleasant disposition and less mysterious and less just more pleasant than Zerth Ficus, uh, and motions to Ficus to like write that down and he starts um apparently hearing brain dogs 
being, them being called brain dogs, it's like something they want to make sure that they can remember. So in case they meet other, uh, uh, so you've established brain dogs as the common, uh, the common word for these creatures. Um, yes. So he, uh, Zerthraya says, yes, you have seen evidence of the illithid or as you call them, the mind flayers. So, May I ask what you are looking for down here? Are you trying to make your way somewhere? Are you lost? Does the name Fordak Hems mean anything to you? We know that he was a follower, much like the Shard Mind of Father Lymic trying to release Father Lymic, the elder evil, from beneath the jungles to the east. Uh, but he was a powerful beholder, and we are not sure what happened to him. Well, we well, believe we're, we're looking we're... for him. Sorry, I just say that to my traveling party mm. sure that's what i assumed oh yeah yeah we're uh we're we're looking for him uh we were basically led to believe that he has something to do with uh whatever's leading or controlling the shard mind as well we have not seen this aberration while we've been here but we have seen mind flares and we're not quite sure what they're doing what possibly could come out of them releasing Father Lymic, so we don't know what their goals are. But, as I said, it could be something that they're manipulating other races to do, which could further another end uh, that they have in mind. Uh... Are you, have you ran into the Disciples of Chems, perchance? Yeah, I've had a run in there too with them. Where did you have a run in? I was uh, real far away, far, far to the south. uh, Near one of their monasteries, actually. How long ago? Oh, that would have been three years, probably, since uh, since they bailed. And I've tracked them up to the Varanal Dominion, so here I am. They are here, and they seem to be followers in a similar form as the Shard Mind, in that they want to release Father Lymic, or as they call him, Kem's father. Ah, I see, okay. Yeah, it was one of them that had given me the name Fordak Kem, so that's what I, I grabbed hold of, thinking that was their leader or something like that. What with the name being similar. But yeah, the Disciples of Kems, that's uh, when you get down to it. That's really who I'm looking for. Have you seen any of them up here? As you say you know they're here. We How do you know that? We saw them with the Mind Flayers, and then we tried to capture one of them, and they ended their own life but we were able to extract that little information uh, from them they seem to be working with the mind flares didn't happen to be a dwarf did it no this one you thought no but i did see a dwarf yeah good to know and a Thanks gnome. A gnome. And a gnome. Very fancifully dressed. Had a lot of gadgets. Can't say I know a gnome by that description. Anyways. Uh, and he's looking at your chest. Uh, Zerth Raya is. And Zerth. 
Um, Ficus is behind you and trying to... It looks like they're looking at your skin, uh, your tattoo. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to address that or no? Nope. Okay. May I ask, are you... Were you once a follower of Kim's. Hey, Ryan, I can hear that. BTW. Oh. Okay, thank you. Um, no, I wasn't a follower of him. I just, uh, well, I, I was real close. I, I knew that dwarf that you saw. He was a good friend of mine, so I, I, I learned a few things from him, not really knowing what I was learning, I guess you could say. What is the name of the of the of your friend? His name's Bulgrod. And uh well he was fine when we were kids, but as as he grew he, he got deeper and deeper into following them and we grew apart until uh well until they left the monastery. Sent me off chasing him. Do you know of a young human who was with them? Yeah. How young are we talking? I do not know human aging as the Githzerai do not age where we come from, but Oh we're talking one of our one of our little ones can carry him. Um yes. Yeah, they 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 would have had a small human with them. At least last I know, at least. They still have that uh, young human when you saw him. Yes. Did they? Uh, did they look all right? They looked fine. The gnome was very interested in the young human. Hmm. Good to know. Thank you for that. And at this point, he basically asks you guys if you want to have dinner, and they'll continue the conversation. You guys should be pretty tired at this point. Um, you're not sure what time it is out uh, outside of the underground portion of the world you're in, but... Uh, it's probably about time you guys ate. Um, you guys agree? I'm starving. Yeah, let's uh, let's stick around here for a little while, while longer, guys. I'm no good for that. Turn, no reason to turn down good hospitality. And during the dinner, you get more information about the Illithid and um how they they tell you not to get within grasp of them the mind flayers will use their boring like mouth to eat your brain and you're also informed that the brain dogs are will stun you and replace your brain with that their brain and essentially mind control you use you as a meat puppet and you're also told that mind flayers are extremely intelligent have psionic abilities which is j unlike just about anything else it's unlikely that you've heard of it but it's it's very rare uh, on the planet um, and you're told that many times they're controlled uh, illithid hives are controlled by elder brains um, and they can essentially put these little bugs in your ear and turn you into other mind flayers um, and they talk about like uh Dave, do you want to take a break? I'm good. Okay. 
Um, <laughs> feel free to take a break because I know you have a hard time uh, mm -hmm. concentrating, and we'll just continue. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, they tell you that the Mind Flayers are a sp once a spacefaring race, so uh, they'll travel from sphere to sphere, which is kind of like world to world or galaxy to galaxy uh, on these ships that are controlled by their psionic abilities. And um, sometimes these Mind Flayers colonies are either stuck here, they were sent there, or something happened where um, they're stuck on an individual material plane planet. Um, and that they kind of uh, hypothesize that that is possibly what these Illithid are. They might be stranded here and therefore are trying to uh, possibly make a deal with an elder evil like Father Lymec or Kem's father, however you like. Um, and um, Zerth Raya is asking you more and more about yourself, Crispy, and um, asks you, like, how do you fight, if I may ask? Uh, mostly I, I hit things, either using, uh, well, this whip I got, this uh, flail I got, or just my good old fists and, and feet. But if I need to, I, I can always pepper something full of arrows. Where did you train? Uh, <clears throat> you know that uh, that dwarf I mentioned. Yes, he'd be the one who uh, who taught me some of the things I picked up from him uh, early on. And Zerth Raya looks at Zerth Ficus, and they kind of give each other squinting eyes. And Zerth Raya turns to you and says. You impressed Zerth Ficus with your fighting for being so woefully undertrained. <laughs> Th thanks, I guess. And they're saying this like just completely flat <laughs> affectation <laughs> and just when you laugh, there's no... <laughs> like it doesn't... Right. Um, and... Uh... Are you interested in training further, perhaps? Well, I'm always up for learning something new. As I told you earlier, Ristilzen is a monastery in the frozen jungles, and it was established by the Githzerai to watch over this planet and this sphere. And we train... a few monks that are native of this planet and the rest we train other githzerai but if you are interested in training with wrist domain domain d o m h i h a i n R Y S T, Ris Domhain, uh, which is, he tells you, is the common tongue for their monastery. Uh, we could train you through means that would not require your physical presence, but you would still gain the needed training. Well, that don't know I can rightly wrap my head around that, uh, but I, I certainly will take that into consideration. Like you said, I, I can't deny the fact that I'm that I am untrained uh, outside of what I can figure out my, on my own. I'd like to think I did all right, but you very much have done all right for being woefully undertrained, but. You will need much more training if you're to rescue your family member. 
Yeah, I probably will. And we are perfectly willing to help you with that and want to help you with that. As long as you would commit to dispatching Illithid and other evils on this world. Yeah, that's probably a commitment I'm, I'd be just fine in making, based on what I've already learned. Your mental uh, stick to will guide you in getting to this goal, but first we must put you through a series of trials to see if you truly are able to undergo training. All right. Physical trials I can do just fine. And he motions over and says, Monk Elthus, would you join me? And this monk, who has some of the black hand wraps, um, is similar build to uh, Zerth Ficus, but a little taller. Um, no, none of the other gith are as lightly green, uh, light, have a light green skin complexion as Ficus. Monk Elthus comes over, and Zerth. Uh, Raya says, would you mind sparring with Crispin for a bit? And Monk Elthus bows, and uh, Zerth Raya says, there will be no weapons for, well, until I say so, but... For now, stick with your fists and feet. If it's just sparring, that's just fine with me. Okay. Uh, roll initiative. And you guys, what are you guys doing while um, it looks like they're... Uh, Cheering or... on the sidelines. <laughs> Prati is trying to find some meat for his map mimic. Um... Orson is looking in one of his books, learning uh, the spell that he just acquired. Cool. And just, kind of, just trying to see if his hand, like, oh, I could see right through it. Okay. Perfect. Keep practicing it. <laughs> um, Zerth Raya uh, sits in a meditative pose, and some of the rocks around this cavern room uh, float to form a circle and kind of like a pit area demarking where you're supposed to spar uh what did you roll um so i get advantage and i rolled two 18s so i have a 22 cool <laughs> i just always think it's funny when i roll the same number when i have advantage and disadvantage yeah <laughs> especially when it's good <laughs> it's better than two ones or two twos that's true um you, so uh, monk elphis is circling you and is in a ready stance and is uh on the edge of his very long clawed feet they're the humanoid feet but they have very sharp claws at the end um yeah and it's your turn to make a move well we're sparring so i'm gonna close the gap and uh start whacking him do it Uh, so first hit is a, let's see, what's my modifier? Uh, first it's a 24. Yep. Second hit is a 23. Yep. I'll go ahead and flurry of blows. Come out swinging. Oh, that was terrible. <laughs> Third hit's a 10. And then fourth hit is another 23. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, wow. Obviously the 10 doesn't hit, but the other ones do. Okay, so that's eight, 15, 19 points of damage, and I'll make the last hit, why not, a stunning strike. Okay. Yeah, Crispy, let's go, kick his butt. Kick his ass, sea bass. 
<laughs> Where's my key? There it is. It's a constitution save. Yeah, what, uh, what's the DC? 14. He saves. Um, but when you're hitting him, he seems to be very taken aback by your just aggression going straight in. Not used to it in some ways. Uh, but you do notice that um, he is leaning back. Uh, still taking the full force of your blows, but seems to be trying to anticipate your uh, attacks, and for most of them failed miserably, other than the uh, the third one, mm -hmm. and um, looks pretty freaking wrecked. And <laughs> Zerth uh, Ficus is standing up at this point. He had taken the meditative pose. And is standing up, kind of looking at Zerthraya and looking back to the fighting pit. And um, the monk is going to attack you. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be a, a six. No. He is so... Uh, taken aback. Taken aback and just beating the shit that he swings wildly and um, at that point Zerthraya says enough and looks at you and goes well that was an easy enough test I think Zerth Ficus might give you a better match here <laughs> And Zerth Ficus looks at <laughs> at Zerth Raya like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> this guy's not in my class. What are you doing? And, fuck you, guy. Don't throw my name in there. <laughs> um, it's yeah. It's more like just I have to waste my time doing this. Like I'm above this oh, type God. of deal. Um, and so Zerth Ficus the the gith who stepped out of the shadows uh, steps into the ring and go ahead and roll initiative again. Still no weapons, right? No weapons. Twenty one. Okay. As you guys are rushing towards each other, uh, Ficus seems to be a little bit quicker. And um, Cass, let's see what does he do. No, no, forget that. Oh, wait. Uh, he's just going to unarmed strike. Yeah. That's a 28. Uh, and a. 19. Yep. And... He's going to... Flurry of Blows. <laughs> 17. Uh, yep, that's my AC. And then another 19. Wow. All four hit. Not being able to use my monk weapons is a bummer for a Kensei. <laughs> yep. And that's going to be... Uh, 21... 27 points of damage as this other oh, gith uh, just unloads faster than you've ever seen and seems to be favoring the side that is shadowed uh, from the fire, from the campfire. Um, when he leans over there to strike you and goes back, he seems to almost disappear a little bit. Um, and... 
Uh, that will be his turn. How are you All looking? right. Oh, I look very hurt. I mean, I didn't start out off. I wasn't topped off when I started. Um, but now I'm looking quite hurt. Uh, so I'm going to go a little more defensive with this round as I take a second and start to concentrate, and start to move my hands. And all of a sudden, this like a uh, concentrated white light, like, like a circle of white light appears in front of me. Uh, and it's just undefined, soft white light as I cast Shield of Faith and have that hovering near me. And then with my bonus action, I will take Patient Defense. <laughs> okay. All right. And I will. And I'll say, hit me now. <laughs> hit me <laughs> now. <laughs> blood. Yeah. Like cough up blood. <laughs> um, Zerth Ficus turns to when you're casting these spells that are clearly defensive in nature and taking a defensive stat uh, stance, he turns to um, Zerth Ryan is just like looking like, why would you ever even claim to think this man could fight me? Uh, And he's going to, right before he acts, Zerth Raya says, Crispin, you may use your weapons now. Seemingly in know. reaction to Zerth Ficus <laughs> being a cocky prick. Uh, what are what are you guys doing while this is going on? Uh, I react uh, seeing that he just basically pummeled crispy and then obviously he has this white light going on so i'm like so i'm now seeing him through my hand i'm like oh and he <laughs> just puts his hand down it's like okay this is gonna get good <laughs> hey hey do you want to do a bet uh, okay okay what what do you want to bet i have a toy spider and i have I'm some a... other things let's do well, let's bet some money okay you what do you got? Play, you want to play 10 gold? 10 gold? You want more or less? How oh, about well, 10 gold sounds good? All right, cool. Okay. I'm putting wait, 10 wait. on crispy. Okay, no, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, we just saw that white light. Why would I want to bet against that? There has to be something else that we could bet on. Uh, how about... Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking that uh, one thing that we could bet on would be, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe one of us could get a bigger side of the bed when next time we rest. I mean, I don't take up that much room anyways. Oh, that's right. Okay. All right. Ten gold it is. And I'll bet on the, I'll bet on the other guy. Do you want to bet person. on this thing? Well... Okay, no. You wanted to bet on Crispy. <laughs> you bet on Crispy. I'll bet on the other guy. Okay. Okay. Let's do, let's do 20. 20 gold. You want to go to 20? Are you a hustler or something? Uh, no, yeah. no. No, okay. Okay. 15. Okay, we'll split the difference. 15 gold. <laughs> Shake. There you go. Uh, yeah. Let's go, Crispy. So... No, Crispy, don't really. Dave, are you doing anything? Um, I'm just... I, I've got, like... I've been given, like, a like a bag full of, like, little bits of meat. Yeah. Like a little meat bag. And, and I, you know, I haggled for it somehow. Sure. And I'm just sort of, like, feeding him to my map mimic and then eating okay. a little bit. Just wanted to make sure you're not... Just, like, popcorn out of... Popcorn. <laughs> I don't want to uh, skip a chance for you to heal. I'm not saying that you should, but just in case you want to, um, here's your chance. Uh, and feel free to. Oh, I, could, I could do a short rest right now while they're fighting. Oh, you don't have any healing light left. Uh, uh oh, I don't. I don't need to heal or anything. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think you may have met me. Maybe. But I, I, so, what is the scenario? I thought they were like it was just publicly yeah. like they were sparring. They are sparring, we are. but yeah, no, I'm not gonna use. What, this, you no. can help. I'm just asking. Hey, I just telepathically like I'm like, hey, do you want me to heal you? Like, are you? 
Are you good? Like, is this just like a friendly sparring? Right after you get punched fucking hard, quicker than you've ever gotten punched, you hear Prati say that in your head. <laughs> I'm fine! <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine! Um, I, I shoot Crispy, uh, or not Crispy, um, Prati a message, and be like, no, no, heal him, I got money writing on this. <laughs> 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 I'll split the difference with you. <laughs> uh, sure. I'll I'll uh do a little healing light. Okay. I like money. Let's see. You also have the cure wounds yeah. from your. Yeah. So I can use two of those and a healing light, and. I just can't find... Oh, Cure Wounds, sorry. So, that's a D8. So, here we go. Ah, oh, sorry. It's a 2. And then... Oh, sorry. What is... Gotta look under my bonus actions. It's... Oh, it's a D6. So we got another one. And I get 12 total healing. There you go, Crispy. I'll take it. And Xerth Raya looks over at you and kind of smirks when you're doing that. And um, Ficus doesn't seem to care. He's very focused on being offended by the suggestion that Crispy could fight him. So um, he doesn't really give a shit. Um, and... So I see Prady actually walking over to um, Crispy to do the healing. Yeah, Cure Wounds is a touch spell, right? Uh, let's see. Never looked into this. Yeah, touch. Yeah. Um, would I mean would would Prady walk over into the pit and touch him? Yeah. Okay. Um, Zerth Ficus doesn't do anything, but he definitely notices you and kind of chuckles in a very, uh, condescending way. Uh, but yes, Ryan, uh, Orson does. What is he doing? He's, he's skewing the bat. I think, I think he just wanted to touch him. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you, you, he just points like, you think Brody is going to just randomly touch Crispy? For no reason other than, ah, oh, good going, and do nothing of... No, he's obviously doing something. <laughs> Prati just starts, like, touching things. He just, <laughs> <starts> <laughs> to, like... he just like, physical touch. Stop touching, stop prodding random things, Pro Prati. Okay, stop. Ah, stop, pro <laughs> stop, stop touching me. Stop touching me. <laughs> At times when Prati's doing that, it starts to look like the Macarena. Uh. <laughs> uh. Perfect. Um, yeah, Zerth Raya is very amused by all this, uh, and it is Ficus's turn, and he skips his turn. He's so cocky and condescending, and looks at you like you're just a measly human. Oh come on. Okay. So it's your turn. He yep. doesn't do anything. He didn't do anything. Didn't even take burned. a patient, de patient defense. They burned my patient defense, but I'm going to go after him, and I'll, um, I'm going to, I guess keeping distance doesn't really help much here. I'm going to take, you know, pull my uh, flail out, mm -hmm. and I'll, uh, let me see if I have to do this beforehand. I think I can just do it when I hit. Double check. Uh, too many features. Nope, not that one. There it is. So when I hit, okay. So first attack with my flail. Garbage, it was a 10. Second attack uh, with my fist. Uh, that will hit, that's a 24. He, so when you do that with your fist, um, mm -hmm. without any sort of magical somatic uh component uh 
he focuses and a wall of just silvery force pops in front of you as he's dodging and absorbs your the impact of your fist. Ow. Uh, okay, and then um, I'll seamlessly transition into a roundhouse to his face. Try to, at least. Roundhouse. Uh, and that is a 19. Nope. Didn't think so. Uh, okay, that is my turn. Okay. Really? Um, and uh, Zerthficus is going to when I kicked, did I hit a wall of force again, or did he No, stop that was me? just pure him. And when you fought the monk, and now you're fighting Xerth Ficus again, it seems like they are doing something unlike you've ever seen, um, where they are kind of almost predicting or, or where you're going to be coming from. Uh, but Xerth Ficus is much much better at it than uh gotcha and uh ficus is going to oh, oh. um one second it's going to hit you he's going to try oh 14 no. <laughs> no. Another 14. Still no. I'm not going to use that die. Let's um, wait it. It's waited to give you 14s. I don't know what's happening, but it's not doing good. He gets really frustrated and uh Yeah, just gets more resolve and uh it's going to flurry of blows. 28. Yep. 19. Nope. This time, as he as he goes through that last punch or whatever he does, I I the the I like flourish and that sphere that that disc. It's more like a disc of white light that I summoned up slides into place and and intercedes and he hits that instead. Okay. Uh, after the first two misses, you can tell very clearly that this Zerth is losing his his patience and his uh especially since you dodged his first two blows and he uh hits you like he's done before for nine damage uh bludgeoning damage but now when he makes contact with you your experience and your your consciousness is getting punched as well and you take 10 psychic damage as well so 19 total yeah got it ow um, and stunning strike but you know i did oh wait Let's see more. wait no it'd be 19 halved is rounded down is nine i passed my concentration to keep shield of faith up so that second hit or that last hit still missed cool stunning just one strike. let you know i did that stunning strike now 19. That is my save. I believe is his. Yep, that's his DC. Uh, wow. So he punches you right in the diaphragm and you start to feel your limbs start to ten tense up and you shrug it off barely. Um, and he kind of dances away from you. Would you like to take your reaction to opportunity attack? Uh, yes. Okay. I don't see why not. Probably not. 16. Nope. And definitely uh, moves out and seems like he uses your shadow to kind of dip out a little bit. Um, all of his evasive maneuvers kind of shade towards the shade or the shadow. Um... And it's your turn now, sir. Okay, I uh, keep the distance between us and don't close. And uh, I'm going to drop my flail, pull on my whip, and try to crack him in the face with it. 
Heck yeah. Get probably, him, Crispy! Probably don't with a 14. Nope. I'm going to try again with the whip. There we go. That'll probably do it. 26. Yes. Um, so I'm going to spend a key to do one with a blade. So my key energy surrounds my whip as it snaps again across his face. Awesome. Um, have you done that, that before? Adds... I have. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've definitely done it several times. It does spend one. What does your so... key energy look like? Uh, it's white. It's a soft white light. So it's like the whip gets sheathed in a soft white light. And then with the whip, when it cracks, it like focuses it and flashes. So it does 2D6. So that's 9. So that does uh, 13 points of damage. Okay. Um, and then I'll come up right behind it and close the gap and uh, attack... Twice more with Flurry of Blows. Okay. That's a mod 20. Okay. And a garbage. <laughs> mod 20 hits. Cool. That does 10 points of damage. And what the hell, I'll Stunning Strike that one too. Okay. Um, I don't think I'll be standing for very much longer. By the way, uh, Ficus has mage slayer so roll your concentration again on and we'll just yeah got it Oop. uh 16 so that that was better than the other one okay. so it stays perfect and let me roll that natural one So he is stunned. He's stunned. Holy crap. I didn't believe that was going to work. <laughs> and you punch him and he freezes. And you can see in his eyes just this rage <laughs> be behind those, uh, the stun there. Um, and he's going to, what is that monk ability that allows you to shrug? Uh, it's charmed or frightened. So I don't believe it's stunned. Right. You take an action to shrug off a charmed or frightened effect. Stillness of mind is what it's called. Yep. Okay. If that's what you're thinking of, yes, at least. Yes, I am. It's your turn again, since he is stunned for his turn. <laughs> How you like me now? Um, He's raging. So I'm, I'm gonna. <laughs> so this time I'm gonna drop my uh, uh, drop my whip. Like I just let it go. Yep. Um, so I'm gonna spin kick. My bonus action will be hitting him, um, and I have no key left, so it's just a regular hit. I'm gonna spin kick him in the face as I'm spinning. I'm gonna pick my flail off the ground and do my two regular attacks with my flail. Mm -hmm. It's gonna look really cool too, as long as I don't miss them all. Um, and he's stunned, so it's an advantage. Yep. So that's uh, 21 for the first hit. So that's yep. the kick. And then flail hit is a 24. Yep. And then flail hit is a crit. Not 20. <laughs> Damn. Okay. So kick is seven points. Flail one is five points. That's 12. Flail two is four, eight, 12. 24 points total. Is that it? And that is my turn. Yep. That's so you guys all see do. all this shit happen. You see stunning of of Ficus after Ficus has been beating the shit out of Crispy. And the tides turn all of a sudden. And uh, Ficus is just barely bloodied, but he looks fucked up. And, but very angry as he regains control of his muscles. And has a renewed focus on you crispy and will and will end this <laughs> he's going to use his mind again in a similar way to uh when he used shield on you and this time what happens 
is a scene uh, appears in front of you essentially of your worst nightmare what would be crispy's worst nightmare and you can uh, feel free to just like be vague but also mm, give us something sure sure uh the people i care about burning alive in front of me and you see that in front of you and make a wisdom saving throw have any no i don't oh i was gonna be so good seven <laughs> nope uh you are frightened bummer and uh at this point zerth raya starts to stand up and is looking annoyed and um as you're frightened zerth ficus walks up to you and does the same sort of thing uh, with his spell casting, or it just seems to let him be there's no somatic or verbal, it's just him like focusing. And you see just like water droplets and um, what little firelight there is kind of coalescing around his fist. And at that point, and he's gathering it back, uh, Zerthraya yells, Ficus! And Ficus pauses, and it kind of just goes back dissipates and um his fist goes back to normal and ficus turns to raya just giving him a dirty look and raya says you have not trained enough to even begin to attempt what you are attempting nor is your mind still enough for me to allow you to do that would you like to continue? And uh, Zerth Ficus doesn't say anything and is just steaming still. Um, but after a few seconds, just kind of walks out of the pit and uh, takes a seat on the other side of the cavern from the campsite and um, gets into a meditative stance as, you know, there's a little bit of uh blood and cuts on him that's still uh evident but he's definitely the fight's over now and um there's an intensity in raya that is pretty terrifying um but calms down as soon as uh ficus leaves and goes away essentially um yeah, so that was your second test, and Raya says, Impressive, Crispy. That was not good at the beginning, but it seems that you have a resilience about you that you will need if you are to survive through what you want to do. And um, the final test is one of meditation and requires only you and I sitting together as I test your mind and its uh, psionic and uh, psionic capabilities and he leads you over uh, away from the rest of the group, and you're kind and before of before he does that. Yeah. Like when I when I shake off the fright and the, the fear, and I don't see my loved ones burning alive in front of me anymore. Um, I start like jumping. I'm like, "Ooh, your boy can fight! Oh man, got my blood up!" And I'm just I'm a mess. Like my face is wrecked. <laughs> like, I am bloody. I am beaten. Um, but like I'm, and then he says we have to meditate, and I'm like shit <laughs> <laughs> okay let's do it and as he takes you over to the side kind of like just the most secluded portion of this room which is not very secluded um he tells you that to get into a certain position uh and 
if you pass this test, it will only be six hours of meditation. But if you fail, we will try again for another six hours. And uh, again, for a third time, if you don't pass again, and then that will be the end of the test. If you do not pass within three six hour sessions of meditate meditating uh yeah but um what what do you the rest of you do while you see this end and then that go on i i can't tell if he won or lost i uh, that, did that i do we i think that's a win for me since He's still standing, and he didn't leave the arena first. So I'll take that gold, please. Yeah, but look at him. He's just... He looks like... He looks like chopped pork. Look at him. But he delivered the final blow. That's... Have you not been to fighting before? That's kind of what happens. The winner doesn't look like he really won. Yeah, well, while Orson's saying look at him, you see, uh, you see Crispy kind of like force open one of his swollen eyes with with one hand to kind of see what exactly Zerthraya is motioning him to do um this is while you're talking <laughs> that that doesn't look like a winner over well, there he's not dead and the other guy left like number one if you're gonna fight either someone goes down or if they leave they're the loser Prodi, what do you think? I, I I can't tell from just looking at this. It's it's a draw. I mean, they there there was no clear clear winner. I think it was. I think we were looking for one of the one of the people to be knocked down at least. And what what did the happen. other gets say about who the winner is? Uh, Monk Elthus is just observing, and the other monk. Uh, Ferk uh, is very interested in listening to Orson and uh, Ashwin talk about this, and Monk Ferk uh, chimes in. No, well, I think it's a win any time Zerth Ficus is put off of his game in such a way. A win for Crispy, that is. Oh. Huh? Well, okay. There see, you have it. Well, all right. Then here it is, and he and he takes the fifteen gold, or in this case, I think it's like one platinum, five gold. Is and oh yeah, and just hands it and hands it to her. Um, and Monk Ferk says to you guys like, "Oh, I did enjoy watching Ficus get his ass handed to him. That's how you say rear end here, right?" Yes. Okay. yes. 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 Hundred percent. He's a bit of a brick, if you know what I mean. Oh, I think we use a different word for that. Oh, what what word do you use? Uh, nothing in polite company right now. A uh, stone. not unless you. You'll go with that stone. Stone. Oh, stone. He has less stone. Yes, has less stones than he started off with. Okay. He's not a brick, he's a stone. Okay. Or a rock. Okay, thank you. And um, while the meditation is going on, Ferk invites you with to go forage in some of the caverns that they've been foraging in. Uh, so it'd be, he's inviting Orson, Ashwin, and Prati to go forage. It's up to you guys whether you want to. Yeah, I want to go forage. Sure. Sure. Okay. And he leads you um, with Monk Elthus to a uh, to the left tunnel, the bigger tunnel entrance back out to that uh, three-way junction. And they lead you into it for a short distance and then to another adjoining tunnel that's much smaller and as you get into this other tunnel uh Firk, monk Firk says do not go down that tunnel there is a hideous creature that lives down there uh it would be great folly 
for you to go down there and continues down the tunnel. It's not one of those it it mind flayers, is it? No, it is a creature that has been tainted by magic in some way. I'm not quite sure, but uh monk Monk Elthus, do you remember what Raya Zerth Raya said? And Monk Elthus goes, who still looks pretty battered, um, is just like, no, I don't. I just my head hurts. And um Monk Firks is racking his gith brain and says I think he called it a mothic. Ma, ma, I don't remember. But anyways, we're not going down that tunnel. Just don't go down there. He says it's a powerful being that is evil down to its core. Uh, and Can I make a history check to figure out what that he possibly could be referring to? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Oh, Two seconds while he's doing that. 22. Yeah, you think he's there's nothing you've ever heard in fairy tales or anything like that. Um, anything that you might know that is a mothic, but it sounds a lot like nothic. And uh, a nothic is a being that's been um, essentially a magic user. It's an aberration now, but it's a, a magic user that's either been tainted or through its own use of questionable magic been affected. Oh, okay. And, um, yeah, it's definitely something you've heard of in stories as other aberrations, uh, similar to the mind flare you've heard. This one is different, is dangerous in a different way in that it is, uh, quite large and, um, yeah, has some interesting uh, abilities that uh, includes, like, staring at you with one big eye um, that does something that it seems to melt your insides. You're not quite sure what it, what it was. You don't recall, but, um, yeah. That's what you recall. And... Uh, if, the, if you have no other questions, Monk Burke leads you down this hallway and um, kind of leads you to these this fungal patch um, that you see has already been kind of uh, harvested, probably, you think, by them. Um, and Monk Ferk says, be careful, only harvest these fungi here these these uh purplish gray ones if you if you harvest the pure purple ones you will get sick and they show you and you watch them harvest um but it is very interspersed with the pure purple and the light purple and so i will ask that you guys make either a um, survival check if you would like to help harvest or a um, yeah let's just call it a survival I was going to say just to ascertain which color shade of purple fungus you're harvesting are you 24 <laughs> Um, so I guess my first question is like, when you're talking about harvesting, are you just like picking it up with your hands? You're, yeah, you're, you see them, they're, they're, um, pulling the caps off of some of these, uh, mushrooms, as well as using a small dagger to scrape some of the, uh, the ground around the stems, but they're not taking the stems. Okay. Um, then... Orson is going to use Mage Hand to harvest so he doesn't okay. catch it. Uh, do your uh, survival 
Survival. And oh, I, wow, that's... I, assume, I assume you're doing it away from other people, so in case your control of your mage hand does goes wrong, they're not affected? I... Like, he's pretty confident that he could probably just do it in front of them. He just doesn't... If he knows he doesn't need to touch it, then... Sure, 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 sure. It. So, yeah. So, but I did not roll well. So, that would be a total of seven. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, what'd you get, Dave? 24. Ashwin. 22. I mean, the DC was so low, but um, let me pull this up. Uh, as you're scraping some of the ground, Orson, you're pretty sure you see some of this fungus try to grab onto your dagger. It's not strong enough that it rips it from your mage hand's grasp, but you definitely saw it react, um, and you think, like, oh, that must have been one of the ones I shouldn't have touched. Um, but you guys harvest. Uh, Monk Elphis uh, is so out of it, he's he's had stopped harvesting because Monk Zer uh, Firk was was uh, sure he was going to harm himself. And um, Firk says to you, like, looks at you while you're doing this, Orson, like, that is why we use our hands so we can see exactly what we're doing. But um, I'm glad you weren't hurt, I guess. And so you guys have some mushrooms of various sizes. Uh, you're ready to go. Anything else you'd like to do? Otherwise, Monk Firk will lead you back to um to the encampment it's taken a couple hours to do all this mm. why can't we touch the full purple ones again like what's so bad about them uh that any points it's like that's where my dagger is it's in the middle of that purple patch it's like they could they could have the dagger if they come back fighting with us with that dagger we at least know where it came from hmm like, what if we put it in one of our bags, like scoop it with our bags of holding? And then now we have this real cool mushroom that attacks, apparently. Well, I did keep a biting head in my sack once. Let's get, let's do it. You want to try it? Sure. So <laughs> I'm going to try to... Scoop it with our bag of holding, please. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, Monk Firk, when he sees you start like grabbing your bag and like you know prepping it and trying to get like you know a good hold of it to he's like at first confused and then he starts backing up and he grabs uh the shoulder of of elthus and pulls him back and says you guys shouldn't be doing that they react in a much force more forceful way uh, the more force you use, and but you guys continue, and uh, let me roll this. And okay, when you start scooping with your bag, Orson, uh, there it is. It's gonna be a sixteen to hit. Uh, that hits. Uh, and a 19 to hit as the fungus, the little bit of fungus you saw move before, when you're using your bag to kind of jostle it and get to it, it kind of rises up and goes around you. And when it touches you, you feel like your skin goes instantly cold and starts dripping off and just rots Oh. <laughs> oh. Um, Why the... didn't you guys say that we'll have rotty, drippy skin? 12 um, necrotic damage, Orson. Okay. I, I, take, I take that, and 
as this uh as a horrible reaction to that um i um i activate hellish rebuke yeah and what's your hellish rebuke look like um hellish rebuke uh suddenly like his skin kind of begins to like burn as if it was on uh burn as if it was on fire so it looks like fire okay um these it's like orange flame yep okay so this orange flame uh comes down his arms meeting the the violet fungus that is climbing up your arms and just lights it on fire and it goes up pretty damn quick um like it is uh very um holy shit i have forgotten the word that means Flammable. Flammable, Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> and this fungus around you is instantly burned up. Uh, I'm not even going to make you roll for it because of the HP. You can if you want. Actually, you know yeah. what? Do it, because I want to see okay. if you get something super low. All right. Let's see. So many oh, dice. Um, yeah, could've, um, could've that would be off. that would be twenty. Yeah, you're fine. Um, <laughs> uh, now, Ashwin, when you're doing it, kind of on the other side of the trail, uh, this stalag tight. The ceiling ones are the tight. Stala- Stal- stalag tight. Tight. Yeah. Tight. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, a stalag tight. When you're when you're kind of scooping stuff up with your bag, Ashwin, the same thing happens where the fungus kind of animates much more than you thought you saw and climbs up your skin, but also activates on the stalagpite and, and starts to reach for you down. And, uh, 14, 13, 9, and 6. Do any of those hit? No. Holy shit. Um, yeah, the fungus starts reaching in you. As soon as it starts touching your little mouse fingers, uh, paws, uh, you pull you pull back and uh, get out of the way as also the fungus starts reaching down. Um, you're now free of it, but you guys do not have any of the fungus. What would you like to do? It's not worth it. <laughs> wait, wait, you, you said that uh, the stalactite fell down, right? No, the fungus was, it was covered, the fungus had covered the stalactite, but it's the animation of the fungus, of the violet fungus, like, was reaching down in a pseudopodic motion. Uh, motion. Mm. I don't think I could. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh. You know, as much as I wish to to take this, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass. Yeah, you look over and you see Orson's arm kind of around his wrist. S- there's skin hanging off, blackened, mm. like greenish, yellowish skin, and there's pus. Ew. We're gonna have to put a band aid on that. Well, we'll have to put more than a band aid on this. And but. We should get out of here. Monk Monk Firk is like with his no nose and is just like looks like he's gagging. Monk Elthus is just feeling shitty and is not paying much attention. Is just pretty much relying on Firk to get him places. What are you doing, Prodi? I'm just laughing my ass off. <laughs> Let it be known, Prodi's laugh, uh, cackle is ka 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 ka. And you guys are led back, and surprisingly, it's been a few hours, and Crispy is still meditating and bleeding. <laughs> Some of it's coagulated. Um, are you pretty sure the blood coming out of his ear is still going? Like, it's still flowing? Um, but I need you, Crispy. 
Crispy, crispy, crispy. I need you, Crispy, to make a a uh, concentration check, we'll call it. Twelve. Okay. Um, as you're going to the end of your sixth hour, uh, and this meditation has just been a guided meditation with Raya, Zerth Raya, and he is uh, essentially having you visualize various... Uh, things and you're not sure if he's putting these visions in your head or if your imagination has gotten suddenly a lot better but uh he's he's guiding you through like a forest and then down under the water uh and essentially asking you of your fears and your uh, loves and your um, greatest trials and tribulations. Are you being completely honest with him, or yeah, okay? And uh, at the end of the sixth hour, he says to you, "Do you think you could put aside the?" love of your son if you thought it would benefit your son I suppose it would depend on the conditions of that cut yourself off from those feelings sever them put a ocean between you and that love for the benefit of your child oh, as, as long as it's still for his benefit then yeah I could certainly try I've been living and breathing off of the, those very emotions for so long now I, I don't rightly know if you do not learn how to live by other means and act by other means you will surely die sooner rather than later and you're kind of at the end when he asks you this your indecision um, tells him everything he needs to know and he says you require another six hours of meditation and leads you on and um, similar things happen he's putting you in different situations to see how you'll act in terms of like other people and uh, other innocent people you're trying to save in various ways not just with fighting but with um, your words and what you're willing to allow yourself to be put through to possibly benefit others uh, you know, situations where you could um, clearly just turn a blind eye and pretend like you didn't see it, but you are, you know that you could do, you should attempt to make a difference. So like you may see maybe some slavery going on between uh, this group of bandits, but you, there's also some doubt. Like, it could be another situation, and you're trying to convince yourself um, that it could just be, like, a hazing thing or something. Um, but in your heart and through your intuition and wisdom, you know that it is something untoward um, and he's putting you through situations like that um, and uh, while this is going on everyone else is uh, eating these two are just meditating um, and what are you guys doing beside are you talking to ficus comes up to grab food at some point during this uh, meal and during the waiting period you guys are experiencing um, do you say anything to him, or do you guys just kind of talk to Monk Elthus and Monk Firk and each other? 
Um, right now, Orson is trying to figure out where he can just lay down for a bit to take a short rest, if that's possible. Yeah, definitely. Uh, in that time, uh, you definitely have time to short rest, all of you do. Um, do you guys have bed rolls you use? I, I don't think I've ever asked you that. Otherwise, yeah. you're going to be sleeping on the bare stone floor. I have one if if Orson needs one. Uh, yeah, I think I think I could use one. So yes. Yeah. Okay. Hey, uh, Orson, before you take a nap, um, you know those thingamabobs that you got from the circus? I don't remember what they were called. They have funny names. Those thingamabobs, the the punks? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was wondering um, if I could, like, examine them more closely since I have time now. Okay. So he shows her all the punks that he has. So that is a blue punk, orange punk, purple punk, and red punk. Okay. I think I uh, gave you information on what one of them was for sure, right? One of them was a heroism punk. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And yes. then you said that I would need, like, if I wanted to get more information from the rest that I needed, like, way more time to yeah. do it. And you definitely have the time to use your alchemy kit uh, now and sample things. Um, and what you find... Where did I put that? Um, I have it here. Forget it. Alchemy kit... I just want to check this real quick. Where did you the one of them was the fil, was the potion of the love potion, right? Or was that from something else? Oh, I don't I know. That was from something else. Yeah, that was from something yeah. else. Um so Two of them are, one of them is definitely the heroism potion. The orange one is the heroism potion. Um, and the uh, blue one, I have a lot of colors written down here. What were the colors you bought again? I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, orange. Purple, red, and blue. Uh, the blue one is a potion of cold resistance. Essentially, it function as a, functions as a potion of cold resistance. The mm -hmm. purple and red, the red is a regular potion, uh, healing potion, so 2d4. Mm -hmm. And the purple one is a greater healing potion, 4d4. Which is pretty, 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 pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good. I've been dying to know what those were for a while. Do you tell, <laughs> do you tell Orson what they are? Yeah, I'm going to go wake Orson up for real quick. Like, hey, 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 Orson. Oh, yes, yes. <sighs> yeah, 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 we're... Yes. Hey, I yeah. found out what they are. <laughs> oh, okay. What, what, what are these? So, um, I already found out your orange is going to help get its heroism. Oh, okay. The blue one is cold resistance. And um, okay. your red one is just a normal healing potion, mm -hmm. which could come in handy now that you know that you have some healing on you. Uh-huh. Uh, but I think you're really going to like that purple one. It's a greater healing. Okay. So since you since you decided to at least look at all of these, do you want any of them? Oh, no, no, no. I just was very interested in knowing what they are. I think you will probably have better use for them. Well, I kind of figured that you took some of your time and skill in order to find out what these were. Otherwise, I would have just had four random bottles. So I figured if you wanted any of them, you could have one. Okay, um, I'll take the 
The blue one, then. Okay. It's yours. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I'm going to go back to... <sighs> oh, or say... What, 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 what? Yes, you yes. You want to fix your arm. Oh, yeah. We, we, should, we should do that. Now that we have stuff to maybe fix it so it's not so icky. Since you're short rest, it has started to heal, but it's still very icky. Like, you can tell it's healing, but icky. Well, I can wear a long sleeve shirt. That too. We can just yeah. wrap it in cloth. I will take wrapping in cloth because even though we got the hospitality of the people... No, do you know what? We should find out what they can do. Let's talk to one of the monk for monks comes up to you with some some uh, what look like moist just bandages uh, just looks like plain cloth but uh, you see where he came from there's a little bowl a wide uh, shallow bowl with some liquid in it um, and you reckon that he pulled this these bandages out of this liquid and he says, these should help your wounds. Uh, if you allow these to rest on your skin, it will quicken the healing process. That would be great. And when, Here we go. When he's doing that, when he's putting it on your arms, from the other side of the 30, 40-foot cavern, Zerth uh, Ficus kind of scolds Firk and says, what are you doing? Why are you helping them? And Monk, uh, Monk Firk doesn't really pay attention, uh, just kind of pauses and looks down and then continues to bandage your arms. And uh, Ficus doesn't, doesn't say anything more, just kind of has an outburst there. Why is Prady, he... Prady, Prady looks right at... Um... Zerth Ficus, and he goes, Watch! And Ficus Watch. gives you a dirty, Watch. a dirty look, <laughs> and uh, holds his fist up, and you see the water start to coalesce around his fist again before he lets it go. Um, but again, since Crispy and Raya don't, are in deep in meditation, they don't really uh, see this. Um, we get to, you guys can continue to do what you're doing. We'll quicken, we'll go to the end of your meditation period. Can I, um, I, I, Prati wants to, wants to wander around the, uh, uh, the, the Zerth Zerai or Dirth Zerai. Where's the, whatever the raiding party is called. The Gith um, Zerai. The Gith Zerai. Yeah. He wants to just wander around and try to find, like, I guess like a their version of a scientist or yeah um, a, a tinkerer or something and just ask them about you know constructs and do they have constructs on their planet yeah. you know um, what do they make so it's definitely you think monk Firk and uh, just based on what you've seen him do but uh, also the uh, Zerth is more like you you think it's probably a title similar to monk or mm -hmm. something like that uh and monk firk says to you oh we don't have constructs really on the plane of limbo but uh we we uh we aren't much for tinkering other than those of us who are enlightened or anarchs who can create things with their minds purely through thought mm, interesting is there anyone here in this raiding party with that ability the closest one would be Zerth Raya but they do not compare to to the Anarchs on Limbo nor the Anarch on this planet in okay. uh, Nithic's Wrist uh, Anarch Helnin, who, uh, and then he tells you, like, Anarchs must use their power and their trained minds to 
to push out the chaos of the plane of limbo and create a place to live on the plane. Uh, the plane is, and he explained to you that the plane is essentially fucking crazy. It's purely chaos and just really hard to live there, but that has to, uh, benefit in that um, it's hard for people who may want to kill you, like Illithids or someone else, uh, Gith Yankee. It's hard for them to get to you. Um, and he tells you that they have these adamant adamantine cit citadels um, that are made of thought, made from the Anarchs' thought, and are maintained through constant concentration by these Anarchs. And enlightened uh, Githzerai are one step below the Anarchs and one step above the Zerths. Okay. So would I have to go to that plane or something to go talk to one of those people? Oh, do you want something made? No, I want something unmade. May I ask what? There's like, there's a construct that I'm trying to I'm trying to remove the her engine or to use a engineering term like it's her the piece that keeps her powered with whatever she's powered by she has something a magical... that I I need it's a it's an artifact and I want to I want to take that out and replace it with a regular construct heart <laughs> whoever made this construct might be able to do that for you. Have you pursued that avenue? He's the person that made her is dead. He's dead. Yeah. Felix Tricknip. Why, why do you think he's dead? Tricknip? I'm just curious. Oh, sorry. He dies in the future where we were in the future. Yeah. Okay. Um, Never mind. I was just curious. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm still confused by that, but yeah, he he is. I guess I could ask him, so I could go to him. Yeah, you you just had an encounter with a a uh, essentially a time uh, drifter, a person who harnessed certain crystals, certain magically inclined crystals to time travel, and you were there at the wrong time and were. <laughs> We're thrust forward in in time. That's why. Yeah, were, yeah. Yeah. Um... yeah. So I saw Felix Tricknip die, but okay. or Tricknips, Tricknips. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, Monk Firk says, "That's an interesting last name. I wonder if it's actually." And he pauses. True. Like is that? Anyways, it is best not to dwell on things of that nature. Uh. Is there anything else? Uh, I, I do not know if they can help no, you in okay. that that's way. It. Or... Yeah. I forgot that the person that, uh, the person that made her is still, still available. <laughs> or you might train for many years and do it yourself. Yeah, that is also an option. Good. It's all good, good ideas. How Thanks. long do can Ku live typically here? Um, they live about 40 years. Oh, well, you better get to studying then. Okay, all right, well, thank He's you. He's very sincere, but just very naive. Oh, yeah. Um, it's so nice that you guys aren't bound by time. It's so, that's so cool. Yeah, and... Um, I'm gonna go take a, sh a long rest, probably, now. <laughs> and, right. he, um, yeah, when he was telling you about the Plane of Chaos, basically, uh, some of the time... On the astral sea, when they go out there, time doesn't essentially work, really. Um, but Brian, go ahead and make a saving throw as you're asked, or not a saving throw, a concentration check. I'm sorry. And you have advantage because it's a second try. Thank God, because I was in that one. Seven. Jesus Christ, Brian. Um, so, uh, as these guys are resting, you are fucking exhausted and we'll skip ahead past yeah. the third one and, um, you have advantage. It's not a high DC, sir. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, with that kind of the 
you realize there's a haze that was over you while you were meditating that must have been brought upon by the the uh, the guided meditation that Raya was was taking you through. Um, and it drops, and he says, "I will train you from now on, and you will." respond to my summons using this and out of his his hands were just around in front of him and out of his hands you see just a broken piece of metal uh it doesn't look like a normal piece of metal as you're looking closer and he says this is a shard of of our adamantine citadel in the jungles of nithix this will allow you to train with me from anywhere on this world. And he hands it to you. So just shard of adamantine. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you very much. I still I can't imagine what that feels like. I guess I'll find out. You will know when you are to train. And Understood. With that, that's where we will leave it for this episode Thank crispy, you. Crispy, crispy collapses right there where he's meditating and that's where he falls asleep <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um there's still like a drop of blood coming out of his ear um thank you so yeah, much. i'm laying in a pool of my own blood <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining us episode 27 of venture ventures actual play D podcast stream show and let's go around the virtual table and plug anything you want to plug. Let's start with you, Lex. Hey, guys. I'm Ashwin. You can find me. Uh, or I played Ashwin. I'm still very <laughs> tired from WonderCon, apparently. I'm Lex. I play Ashwin. You can find me on Instagram at it's period underscore period Lex or on Twitter at it be Lex. And on Wednesday, you can find me on Scabby Rooster, and I play Vi in a Starfinder game. Uh, br- not Brian, because Brian always goes last. Uh, let's go to Dave. Hey, I'm Dave Roderick. You can find me on social media at DRod3. And I would like to plug, I have an improv show this Thursday at the Moving Arts Theater. If you happen to yeah. be in the East Los Angeles area, it's in Silver Lake. And... Uh, it is my movie form team, so another kind of narrative form. So come check that out. It's at 9 o'clock at the Moving Arts Theater on Hyperion. Excellent. Ryan. Nice. Hi, I'm Ryan Omega. You could find me on Facebook and Instagram under Ryan Omega, on Twitter under Ryan OMGA, on Tuesday evenings on twitch.tv slash scabby rooster. You can find my show, Blank Slate, an interactive LARP black box murder mystery and there will be episode three and some interesting things are coming up excellent uh brian and i'm brian and despite working for the internet i have barely a presence there so you can't find me anywhere i just <laughs> am here to play D. oh like hell always. yeah uh i am jake friday you can find me on Twitter at Jake Friday, on Instagram at Jake of the Friday. I'm trying something new with with uh, screen names, um, and you can follow Venture Ventures on Twitter and Instagram as well. Please do so, and uh, we will see you next week Sunday at 4 p.m. Or I will talk to my fellow players about changing the time if they want to. But stay tuned to our social medias to decide uh, or to find out. With that, we will call it a night. Be excellent to each other. Be excellent to yourself. And uh, we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.